Fiscal Year 2016-17 Mid-Year Budget Report. Recommendation, staff recommends that the City Council review and consider approval of the Fiscal Year 2016-17 Mid-Year Report and adopt a resolution entitled Resolution Number 2017-10. Staff report on this. My pleasure to uh, bring this report, uh, give this report to you this evening. Uh, this is the midpoint of the uh, fiscal year for the city, which ended uh, December 30th, uh, 31st of this year. So during the first six months of the fiscal year, um, we, are, we find ourselves in pretty much a similar position to what we experienced last year. For example, uh, our community development, our building activity. Uh, this time last year, uh, through the mid-year, we had issued uh, building permits for 73 uh, single-family dwellings. And this year, at, this, uh, at the same point in time, we have issued uh, 63 building, building permits for 63 single-family dwellings, with a total valuation of about $19 million uh, for those 63 units. That's like $304,000 average for the homes that are being built. Uh, it's not the sales price, but that's the valuation price. So <clears throat> we uh, continue on a, uh, like I said earlier, uh, being stable, but still in a survival mode. And uh, this document, the media report, is primarily focused on the general fund, and we recommended a number of changes within the general fund, and uh, a few changes with uh, the, to the non-general funds. But let me go ahead and highlight some of the uh, additions and changes that we're recommending for the general fund. What we're asking for is, um, on the personnel side, we're asking for the addition of part-time <coughs> staff to assist existing staff with our special events, with our front counter coverage, uh, for internship programs, uh, for community development, and for uh, social media, uh, website, uh, and records management type activities. What we're finding and what we've known uh, <coughs> is what we've been doing in the past is using outside contract labor <coughs> to come in and help us on a temporary basis. And that's, been, that's worked out very well. But we do lose the learning curve when we have somebody different showing up every time to help out with an event or try and establish some stability with a, a person doing a similar, uh, the same task, same routine task. So by hiring a part-time person, person and having them on an on-call basis or a regular um, uh, activity schedule, uh, we will we'll gain in that uh, with their experience of knowing how to do the task, what's expected upon them, and it's, it will keep the local economy uh, moving forward with uh, uh, keeping local um, uh, staff or keeping local residents, uh, giving them opportunity for employment here in the city. So we're looking at adding, uh, there's about five positions, part-time positions that we're looking at augmenting our staff in this current budget. And that would be at no cost to the city, well, it would be no additional cost because we'd be using monies that were dedicated for temporary employment agencies, we'd be using that money to utilize, be utilizing those funds to pay for uh, the part-time temporary personnel. So that's uh, one of the uh, more uh, productive measures that we'd like to take uh, forward this year uh, for the remainder of this uh, fiscal year. We're asking for the addition of uh, some funds for consultants to provide some non-recurring studies in administration and in the city manager's office, and this is related to economic uh, development activities and some state mandated reports that are required upon us uh, that we, uh, one time reports that we uh, feel would be best accomplished by an outside uh, consultant rather than uh, staff. Um, we're truing up some of the public safety budgets, uh, fire and police. Um, we originally gave, we the uh, police and fire gave us their budgets at the beginning of the year for the two-year budget period. We adjusted those conservatively, uh, fe feeling that they were overstated. Now we're truing them up, uh, basically a midpoint between what they had originally given us versus what we thought they should be. So we're truing those up with increasing them uh, a minor amount uh, to make them whole. So we're doing that during this mid-year period. We're also recognizing uh, private development activity, the projects that are ongoing in the city. We're increasing the revenues for that activity $489,700 and increasing the expenditures 
for that activity, 374,000. Typically, we've done this in the third or fourth quarter, uh, and but this year we've been more timely with our billings, so we can see, hopefully, see the future a little bit clearer and quicker uh, with the uh, enhancements that the finance department has made. So we're asking for those changes to be made now instead of third or fourth quarter. Property tax revenues, we're asking to increase those $117,600. <coughs> and that's due to the increases that we're seeing based on last year's <coughs> property tax revenue uh, as compared to uh, this year. The amount that we received in December uh, was higher than what we were projecting to see in December. So we want to increase those uh, by 117000 to reflect that increase. Um, we are also decreasing a transfer that came into the general fund and decreasing the expenditures in the gas tax fund by $171,000. Prior, every year we do cost allocation, allocating general costs to non-general funds for overhead activities. We have over allocated those costs to the gas tax, so we're trimming that up and not and reducing their charge this year by $171,500 which frees up that much more money, and appropriately, uh, for, for our road improvements. So that's another, yeah, that's another item that we're uh, uh, recommending to be changed. So in total, um, for non-general funds, we're asking that the um, revenues be increased for all non-general funds, 119000 and the expenditures be increased 43000 So very minor changes in the non-general fund activity. The more, majority of the increases is in general fund. Uh, in total, asking that the revenues be increased, $452,600, and the expenditures be increased, $509,800 for the two. Uh, this results, <coughs> if these proposals are accepted uh, and implemented, that will result in a general fund balance of $973,787, which is 10% of our general fund expenditures. <coughs> so we, we're back up to the 10% level, which we haven't seen that in a few years. Well, that concludes my uh, report. Staff is available uh, to address any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions from anyone? No. Excellent job. Happy to hear. I, had, I just have one question. And then, when you say the the um, property tax increase, how does that work with the WRCOG money? That I mean, the Hero Program. It's not counted in there, is it? Because the Hero Program, it's it's paid on their taxes, but I think it's still separated out. That it doesn't come to the city; it only goes to the actual property tax. Is that correct? Yeah. It goes to the lender. Yes. Yeah, it goes to the lender. The yeah, that's what I, I just want to make sure that wasn't added in there somehow to where our increase was higher because of that. No. I was I, that's why I'm asking the question. But that's that's true. Yeah, okay. Going, but, you know, uh, like you add on to that by WR Cog and the Hero program <coughs> the budget meeting last uh, Monday. Uh, <coughs> Council member uh, Benoit, he was a chair of the, the executive committee there, and they always give us an update on how the Hero program is impacting each one of the cities. And for the city of uh, Wildemar, since 2011, um, there's been 519 energy-related installations here in the city. There's been 384 solar installations and 43 water uh, installations that have resulted in uh, energy savings. There's also been uh, the amount funded for all these has been ten million five hundred, uh, ten million five hundred thousand dollars of improvements, but that has a spin off because you're uh, it has an economic stimulus uh, effect to it of eighteen point three million dollars and it created approximately ninety jobs for uh, during that time period for those items. Energy saved, uh, the water. Uh, uh, 31 million gallons of water. The uh, emissions reduced 21.9 thousand tons of emissions reduced. And energy saved is 79, is, is 80 million kilowatt hours. So big numbers. Uh, big program. I, I'll give you a copy of this, but you can see the 
areas within the city uh, that have, that have uh, had the improvements made through the program. So uh, quite impressive and um, adding value to the homes also. Yeah, I did one, so I know oh, I'm paying that every is that year. This one? Yeah, is that's that one? little dot in that one. <laughs> I'm the only one that had enough equity that could actually do anything. <laughs> no, it actually worked out really well. It's an awesome program, yeah. and I'm waiting to pay this one off. And then I'm gonna, if they're still around by then, then I'm going to do something else because it's the easiest way to do it. But I didn't know how it affected our actual numbers, so that's why I wanted. I know that it goes to the, but I didn't know if anything. <laughs> showed anywhere else, you know. No, I think that the increases would be the new homes that are being built. Right, yeah. right. Okay, that's all. Yeah. I just had a comment on the part-time. I really like that. So at the Parks and Rec conference, I met one gentleman. He started with the city when he was 17. Um, so I think this is an opportunity for maybe someone trying to go into that field. Mm -hmm. Plus we met college students who were there. who paid their just a fee to go because they're thinking about going into the fields of the something like that. That would be awesome. And actually, there were a lot of millennials at the event, and a lot of men. The men are running the park and recreation programs. Yeah, Harry, was love parks, and we love to type books and stuff. <laughs> Wasn't your first job a part-time parks job in the city? Yeah, I uh, was. My first degree is in parks, uh, parks and recreation. Yeah, I worked in uh, Redondo Beach, Las Vegas, La Vida, L.A. County. So getting a college student like to do this part, I mean, this yeah, is a rather L.A. It's a great program. field. It's just. 1978, there were prop uh, 13 hitting, but there weren't too many jobs in Parks and Rec, so I had to go back, <laughs> back, back into account. Get off the monkey bars. And go back to business. I get it. I was there. I saw you. I wonder who that old guy was at my park. Dustin and I Checking us out. No. <laughs> I must say a word. No. <laughs> That's you too, buddy. Okay, so we need to get a um, move to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, all ayes.